Let's get this started. This is my very last Rebel Clash sealed booster box. We're gonna go ahead and crack this bad boy open. And I forgot to bring a garbage can in, so this will be a little bit of an adventure cleaning up these pack wrappers afterwards. This is my very last set of 36 packs. We are going to crack these open and see if we can get the coveted full art or rainbow. I think I'd personally prefer the full art. Boss's Orders. This is the 12th box I'm going to open, the last box in the second case. Let's see if we can get a white code, a full art Boss's Orders, to see what our hits are in this very last booster box. Commons, your rare, a hollow to start things off, and a capture energy. The capture energy. Probably going to see a lot of use in decks that play colorless. We had Galarian Surfetched Hollow. We're looking for the cool hollows in the set are Dragapult, Baby Dragapult, and Galarian Weezing. Those are the ones we kind of want to look out for. Got our commons here. Phantom is going to be our reverse hollow. Probably pass in the rare slot. Fighting energy. We got a burning scarf and a Skyla. Put my trainers over on this side. And keep everything organized so I don't have to spend 50 trillion hours trying to figure it out. Alright, got a white code here. Can we get the first pull out of the third pack? It looks like we got something spicy here. We got five commons, Galarian Berserker, Reverse Hollow, and... I think it's going to be Nine Tails, just based off the art. That is a Nine Tails V. I don't think I have too many of those. Pretty happy about that. Stick that up here. A Fire Energy to go with it. And the Phalanx that you'll see in the Phalanx deck. Let's, uh, let's get, all the, get all the nice cards up top up there. Alright, first hit. The Nine Tails V. Not a bad card, definitely can see play, especially in the Colossal deck, as we get another white code. Four commons, we got Greent, and Rillaboom V, full art, coming out of that pack. Rillaboom V is my favorite of the starters, not only in the Sword and Shield video game, but also, uh, I think, to play. I think Rillaboom V is the most playable starter. Another white code. Yo, this box is going hot. More whites than green codes. We got another hit here as we get a Milsery and our... Ooh, is that a... What's 210? Toxtricity V. Yo, this box is pretty good so far. I'm liking this. Toxtricity V. Uh, I think we'll see a little bit of high-level success. I think um, high key and low key, that's high key, touch your CV, have different attacks. Both are viable. Another white code. Yo, is this box going to go off? Please be a Dragapult hollow. Let's see if we got it. A Hatterene hollow coming out. My commons are spilling all over the place. And we got a Pokeball reprint as well. A classic card. A classic piece of the Pokemon franchise since the literal beginning. Alright. Oh, this one was glued together extra hard on the seam there. As we got another green code. So far, pretty good pulls. A Luxio. This Luxio makes for a good rogue deck. And our rare is going to be Bear Skewed. I got less rares than I do hits. Which is fantastic. Full heal. Training court left out of that pack. I don't even think we're halfway done with the left side. And this box is already looking pretty hot. Coming out here, a green code. One, two, three, four, five for the Galarian Meowth and the Ninetales Rare. And that is my first playset of energy there. One energy of each type, except for Fairy Rip. Do you guys do people open packs like I do? You kind of pinch it from the top. I'll, I'll I'll break it down a little bit more on the next one. Got a Milo. 
Reverse Hollow. Snorlax, rare. Capacious Bucket Horror Energy. Capacious Bucket is an incredible staple card. See, the way I open my packs, we'll get it on camera. I like to take the little fold here, pinch the front, pull, and then just tear down the, the little grabby part there, and it just opens in one piece. I like to do it this way so I don't rip the pack into multiple pieces. That could be bad for trying to clean up later on. We get a Nugget Reverse Hollow. And uh, Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz blindside. This attack does 100 damage to one of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. One of your opponent's Pokemon, that is. Shuckle. Twin energy. One of each. A One of each for the special energies. This box looking pretty good so far. We've already busted out three Vs, all of which very playable. we got three playable Vs. But can we get the boss's orders. One, two, three, four, five on that. And then we got a Grubbin. Reelaboom V Max to go with the Reelaboom. Max beating for those of you who haven't seen this card. 130. You may discard up to three grass energy from this Pokemon. If you do, it does 50 damage for each card you discarded that way for an extra 150 damage potential. Plus 130. That's a fat, fat 280. Enough to knock out. And ADP. Real Boom V also with the consistency of grass being able to evolve Pokemon so well. Turfield Stadium, Alolan, Executor, Rowlet. Like it is just so much consistency to get those evolution Pokemon out um, that other typings do not have. An Arcanine rare and a capture energy. My commons are now going to be spilling over. I'm gonna actually go ahead and pick up my common pile. And we're going to put it in the box here because at five commons per pack, half your pack are commons. And then there's an energy card. It is a lot of cards to deal with. I don't want to have to clean that up later. All right. Let's go ahead and crack open. We have more than a, an art set left here on this left side. We have a white code here. One, two, three, four, five. Zatu. Sorry, Natu. Not Zatu. And a gold frost moth. This is my first gold frost moth. It's from the Sword and Shield set. They reprinted it as a gold card. Yo, the centering on that is beautiful. That is an incredible looking card. Sorry, the fan is blowing at me because it's really hot in here. But that is the first gold frost moth I've gotten in two cases. Absolutely fantastic. We'll see play in Turbo Lapras decks and a lot of water decks in the future. Gold Frost Moth. An absolutely gorgeous card. That is a very, very good condition copy of the card there. That is my favorite pull so far, unsurprisingly. The Colossal goes well with this Ninetales right here. Uh, that's in the reverse hollow pile, our rare. Right there, Tool Scrapper, Cursed Shovel, Masquerain. A tar generator on that Colossal can power up a Ninetales. It gets a fire and a fighting energy from your discard, and you can put them on any Pokemon you like once during your turn. Go kind of unzipping my pack so I don't create a big mess. Three, four, five. Keep more. Barbacle. Steel, Metapod, Tool, Scrapper, Dan, the biggest meme. Oh, we're not even quite done with this one yet. We have three packs left. I don't think anything will be better than that Gold of Frost Moth pack. So far, though, five hits, all playable cards. Ironically, that Gold Frost Moth might be the least playable card in this pile. One, two, three, four, five, Do Blade, and... There's not, it's not an energy. There's something behind it. It's Sandaconda. Let's go. Another cool card. Uh, definitely slightly playable as a rogue pick. Has good super effectiveness against the ever so powerful lightning decks. Lightning decks are once again incredibly powerful like they were back in Team Up and Unbroken Bonds and Unified Minds format. 
Sandicana being able to hit super effective against them. 220, and then you can just one-shot, like, Alolan Raichu, Raichu, and Pika Ram. 220 is already overkill to knock out Bolton. Or 5, Cursed Shovel, Reverse Hollow, Seismitoad. Darkness, another Galar Mine Stadium card. Last on the left side before I clean up. Insane so far. Six pulls. We're not even halfway done. Caterpie. Squovit. Garbodor. This is going well with the Toxtricity. It lets you, if there's a stadium card in play, poison. And Marshadow, the one that bumps stadiums, isn't seeing as much play anymore. All right, that is the first half. I'm going to clean it up, and then we're going to get started on the second half. Spikeman says, it sounds crazy, but I met you at the SF Scene Anders meetup years ago. Yo, I remember that. You remember me? Dude, that's insane. That was so long ago. I, that was 2012, I want to say. 2011, 2012? I was 16, I believe. That was literally like eight or nine years ago, dude. Well, thank you for coming back and telling me that. How, did you just stumble upon the channel? Have you been keeping tabs on me for like eight or nine years? You were 13? Dude, I was like 15 at the time. I played uh, Don't Break the Ice with Scene Anners. Yo, that was, that was dope, dude. Those are good times. I brought that up. I brought that meetup. Uh, Juicer was streaming, and he only had like two or three viewers or something like that. And I brought it up like, yo, Juicero, we met like seven years ago. And he was like, whoa. I... And then he was playing with Cena. He's like, you remember the West Coast tour? And Cena's like, yeah, yeah. And Cena has since like disappeared and he's like traveling and stuff. Uh, I wish those guys the best. Yeah, Cena was super cool. I love that dude, though. That is that is incredible. I, I'm really curious as to how you found me. Or if you just like stumble, if you like Pokemon and then you came across. Uh, do you play Pokemon? I subbed your YouTube channel after that. I saw your Pokemon TCG videos. Oh, and then you made your way over here. Yo, that is fantastic, dude. You, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you remembered me. I have uh, a lot in my life has changed since then. Obviously, I graduated high school. I graduated college. I've fallen in love multiple times. I've dated multiple people. I've traveled all around the world. I've gone to uh, Europe. Japan three times so far. Been to Europe multiple times. Been all around the West Coast. Um, got a got a job. Then got another job. Then got another job. And that goes on a couple times. And then now I work at Live, and I'm in a VR. I was in a Super Bowl ad. Like, wow, that really makes me. This really just started an existential crisis for me, dude. This really puts into perspective how far I've come in like eight or nine years, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't sound like that long. But also if you do the math, I'm 25 now. And I was like, what, 16, 15? You met me when you were 13? That's crazy, dude. I, well, I'm glad you enjoy Pokemon and that you've stumbled uh, back across me. Life and growth is unbelievable, man. Dude, it, it's crazy because it feels like day to day, nothing changes, right? I do the same thing. I go to work. We're all quarantined. I play Pokemon. I play Beat Saber. I come on and stream. Right? It just feels like this every day the same thing happens. But across nine years worth of every days, it's it's so different. That is absolutely nuts though, dude. That is absolutely nuts that you uh remember me. Alright, anyway, on that note, let's get back into cracking these packs. I got half this booster box left. Now that I have Picked up my cards. My ever-growing energy stack increases. Is getting absolutely insane over there. In case you guys want to see the commons. Galarian Farfetch'd. And our rare is Butterfree. Nothing too crazy out in that one. Galarian Farfetch'd evolves into the uh, Hollow. Galarian... A uh, big Farfetch'd. Sword far fetched. It was literally like the one of the first cards I pulled out. And I'm like, man, I've I've been playing Pokemon my whole life, but to be fair, far fetched hasn't evolved into anything for my whole life up until Sword and Shield. Got Chandelure. All your Pokemon that have energy attached to it have no weakness. It's a stage two though. That makes it rough. That makes it rough. 
And of course, if it gets bosses ordered and knocked out, running a running a thick line of those, I think that might be viable if you're already running rare candy. But other than that, that'll be a hard hard card to play. Top entry Lombre. A lot of Pokemon with top entry. Actually, the Luxio that that Lombre is sitting on top of also has top entry. All right, we got a white code here. Can we get another hit? Comes the Vulpix. And yo, an Eldegoss V! One of the big chase cards of the set because of its Happy March ability. Let's you put a supporter card from your discard into your hand. Effectively turning your Quick Balls into supporter cards. If you need them, you throw away a boss's orders, you need it back, happy march it out if you got the bench space. Float up does 50 damage for two colors, and you can shuffle this Pokemon all cards attach it into your deck. Meaning you can reuse it if you need to, if you need to take a, a light 50 damage knockout. Incredible card. One of the chase cards of the set. Spiritomb is our rare. This box is absolutely busted. We have two massive hits coming out of this one. No full art trainers yet. We don't have a rainbow. We do have a full art Rillaboom under that VMAX. I'm very happy about that Eldegoss V. We get another white code. Can I find a full art trainer? Preferably a boss's orders. The Chandelure. The Toxtricity. Let's go. Toxtricity VMAX. V, uh, G Max Riot. If your opponent's active is poisoned, it does 80 more damage. 320 health is not easy to knock out. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yo, I'm actually getting cards that can be played together too, which is so rare. Santa Cana Nine Tails can be played together. Real Boom V Max and Real Boom can be played together. Obviously, Toxtra V Max. Toxtra C. Like, I'm getting pairs of cards here. That is absolutely insane. All right. Got ourselves a white code here. We got ourselves an Appalin. Hatterene. Oh, no, uh, two grass energy in a row. That is... That is unusual. Usually they give you a set, as I've proven, of energies. Alright, we got still well over half these packs to go. Because I got a green... Clefable... Wish Cash. Well, this Wish Cash was really good in pre-release format. Which was not very widely played. For obvious global pandemic reasons. We got a Toxicity... V Max pack here. I'm gonna crack open. This box, I'm I'm loving how this box is giving me cards that can all be played together. Trevenant, Ludicolo. That is a rare. And we got the training court. The reverse Viridian Forest. What do we got here? Green code. We have in the... I hope no one really cares about the commons. Dan, because I'm going through those fast. Normal Toxtricity. And a Pokeball got reprinted out into that. This set. So far, eight hits. Ooh, and another white code. Can we get a ninth hit? Can we get to ten hits? The first half had six. Dragapult Reverse Hollow. I think this is my first Reverse Hollow Dragapult. Appleton Hollow. Yo, that is my first Dragapult Reverse Hollow. That's such a hard card to get because it is rare. And that is a very playable deck. To get that Dragapult Reverse Hollow, I really think that might be the first one I've gotten. It is the Infiltrator ability if any damage is done to it by attacks. Flip a coin if heads prevent that damage, just like the Whimsicott from Unbroken Bonds. As we have the Daraludon from the theme deck and an Eskew. Capacious Bucket Turf Field Stadium, the grass consistency. I'm going to go ahead and knock codes off of my table. It's okay, I'll go grab them later. We have about looks like six packs left. That Dragapult is almost a hit, though. I'd rather have that Dragapult than some of the other Vs in this set that aren't as cool. Normal Dragapult. Speaking of Dragapult, I really like a Dragapult VMAX. Those cards are going for, as of right now, about $20 for a normal VMAX. All right, we have five packs left. This is a Rillaboom pack. Can we get a couple more hits here? A white code. 
got a Skurskit and an Inteleon V, my second favorite, as I've said. And a Twin Energy. My second favorite starter as far as playability. It has some cool... Inteleon V has cool disruption abilities. Inteleon V Max and Inteleon V can be run as a disruption deck, but... Its weakness to Lightning, I think, really keeps it out of the game and being a top-tier deck. Phalanx can go well with the other Phalanx V. Inteleon V, unfortunately, it's just its weakness to Lightning. I feel like you can fit Weakness Guard Energy in this deck, but um, because it does have Colorless in its attack cost. But it's rough. It's rough to want run Weakness Guard Energy and be weak to such a prevalent typing. Nose Pass and... Stunjourner, Grass Energy, and Elena. All right, we have last up a art pack of big, bi big Cinderace, and uh, that was a green code Vulpix appropriately coming out of the Cinderace pack. Age Slash, Lightning, Metapod, Burning Scarf, Elena. Last pack. The last pack out of the last case. Out of the last box in the last case. It will be a green code. The uh, left side definitely had more hits, but the right side I think had that Eldegoss. And that is going to be it. That is my box. My last box out of my last case. Six box. Second case, 12 boxes, and this is what we got. The Toxtricities, the Reelaboom VMAX, and then Reelaboom Full Art, Nine Tails, Sandaconda, the Gold Frostmoth, the Eldegoss. Pretty good box, considering the Eldegoss, and that's my only Gold Frostmoth. All right, I'm going to clean this up real quick and slip these in the binder. All right, guys, we're not quite done yet, as I have four Rebel Clash Build and Battle Kits I'm going to crack open. Right now, we're going to see if we can get one of each of the promos. And these build and battle boxes, I keep being told that they have better hit rates than booster boxes. So we're about to find out. Uh, it's These are the kits you get before the set officially releases. And the packs in them supposedly have great hit rates. Let's see, we have a Flapple here. I'm not going to open the mini decks. I'm just going to open the packs. There's four packs in these. They usually retail for about $20. And the reason they have higher hit rates is so that casual players buy more product. Is what I hear. I can't be 100% sure about that, but we'll we'll get a little bit of a test here. As I've pulled... Sometimes you pull zero, but I've, sometimes I pulled two Vs out of these. And it looks like we already have one coming out of this one. Will be Ninetales V. Not bad there. Ninetales V coming out of this first kit. Let's see what else we got here. A green code. Not much going on here. Glaring Duramitan, Ludicolo, and a Nugget. Nugget might not be a terrible card for pre-release. If you top deck it, you can draw cards. Gotta remember pre-release format is a much different format than standard or expanded as we know it. Was this... Did I open this upside down? I don't remember. The VOD will tell. Dan. Coming out of this one. So this might just be a single hit box, but we'll find out out of this last pack. Ooh, I see a white coat off the reflection of the inner foil. We got ourselves a Stonejourner V. So, Ninetales out of this first kit. The cool thing with Ninetales in pre-release format is it is only a fire and then a bunch of colorless attackers. So you can splash this into pretty much any deck if you put in some fire energy. That was the first of four build and battle boxes. Pulling out another Ninetales. Let's go on to the next one. All right, second box. Second Rebel Clash build in Battle Box. One hit so far. Our promo will be Colossal. Probably my favorite promo. 
gives you some energy acceleration in pre-release format. Although I found in the Sword and Shield pre-releases, they had Rillaboom as an energy accelerator, and Rillaboom I found to be my least favorite. I played like eight uh, Sword and Shield pre-release, something insane like that. And I found Rillaboom to be the least helpful because you're not really playing Pokemon that have huge attack costs. And, I mean, they did include in the Rillaboom mini deck Snorlax, which was nice and tanky and had some fat attack costs. But Snorlax isn't a super, super great Pokemon in pre-release. I mean, sometimes it took two shots to kill. But if someone got, like, a Zacian V powered up, oh, man, the number of Zacian Vs I saw pulled. I went to big pre-releases. I pulled a full art Marnie at one of my pre-releases as well. I was really happy about that. Nothing too much in this one. Inteleon. Is this just going to be a boof pre-release box? Let's find out. Ah, oh, it's just a boof pre-release box. This is one of the ones I would get if I was playing in a pre-release. Well, I'm glad we opened this one and I didn't try to play with it because nothing too great to use here. Vs are a little easier to knock out though than tag teams, obviously, in pre-release because 200 health is a lot easier to hit than 270, 280. All right, pre-release box number two was a boof. Number three. Let's see if number three is six. So far, only one pull out of eight packs. And uh, sometimes you can expect two pulls out of these. These all came from the same display also. Another Falapple. These all came from the same display. So I wonder... I wonder how that impacts things. A white code. Let's go. We got ourselves... A. The Suspense. Eskew. Colossal. Too bad Colossal was not the promo. That would have been sick, because if it was, then you could run a thicker line of Colossal should something get prized. One time I was playing a pre-release, and my opponent prized all three of their Sobbles in Sword and Shield, and that was just real... Real easy win, but really feels like undeserving win. Because pre-release format is uh, unforgiving. Alright, next up, green code. Only one hint out of these pre-release boxes. Got a capacious bucket. Alright, come on, last pack. Please don't give me two, don't give me two boof. Build and battle boxes in a row. Let's see the full art bosses orders. In fact, these packs are our last hope to see the full art bosses, or a boss's orders. I think out of that last case, I only got one boss's orders. Ooh, all right. That's number three. Let's crack open number four. All right. This is my very last set of sealed Rebel Clash product, and now it is no longer sealed. This is my last chance, whoops, sorry for bumping the camera, to open a full art boss's orders. Or to get another boss's orders, because I think I only have three or four. Garbodor is going to be our promo in this one. And so far only one V. Some of these sometimes come with two Vs. I play, I've definitely played against tons of people in pre-releases who've gotten two Vs or two tag teams or two GXs. And uh, I would like to be the person running two Vs. Alp Creamy. Nothing else in uh, that one, really. Are we only getting one V? Was I completely wrong? I mean, small sample size. But was I completely wrong about these having a higher pull rate? Ooh, a scoop-up net. Yo, did we get any scoop-up nets out of the booster box? Scoop-up nets are real good for your boy Jirachi. Another green coat. Oh no, is my is the display I get? Is this just a boof display? Is this just a boof Rebel Clash build and battle display? All right, this is my last pack. This is my last sealed Rebel Clash pack. I wonder why sometimes they get a little crinkled. 
when they're in the... I mean, I'm going to throw them away anyway. It's not that big of a deal. All of this was completely sealed, so I know no one was screwing with it. I bought it from a very trusted source. No, we only got the nine tails out of the build and battle kits. All right, well, that's going to be it. That is every sealed Rebel Clash product I own opened up. Got multiple nine tails. I'm pretty happy with that last booster box. That was pretty good. Be sure to follow on Twitch, subscribe on YouTube. Still shampoo on all platforms, including Twitter and discord.gg slash stealth shampoo.